Welcome to Electron Online, and now we're going to talk about mass spectrometers. Well, first of all, in order to build a mass spectrometer, you have to have a velocity selector, and we already have a video on how to calculate the velocity come of a particle coming through a velocity selector. Basically what it is, it is a charged particle being shot at certain velocities, so a number of particles. It could be different isotopes, and that's what a mass spectrometer does. It, it, it allows you to figure out what isotope you're dealing with. So different isotopes, usually having the same charge, being shot through a velocity selector, and notice that the electric field is adjusted in such a way that only particles with a certain velocity will make it out of the velocity selector. Then as they get into this region right here where they're no longer being affected by the electric field, the magnetic field will now take over and, allow, and cause the particles to move around in a circular path of various radii. That radius will depend upon the mass of those particles. And that's how we determine by measuring the radius, we can determine the mass of the particles. We'll show you in just a moment how to do that. Well, here you can see that a positive particle moving through a magnetic field which comes out of the board. Take your right hand, put your fingers in the direction of the motion of the particles, curl your fingers in the direction of the magnetic field. You can see that there's a force on the particles to the left. So let me show you that here. So we'll see a, we'll see a force caused by the magnetic field pushing the particles to the left, but they're kept in a straight path because the electric field will will cause a force to exist in the opposite direction. So force due to electric field in such a way that the particles will move in just a correct path. How do we find the velocity of the particles as they come through the velocity selector? Turns out that the velocity is equal to the ratio of the electric field divided by the magnetic field. And if the electric field here is 2 times 10 to the fifth volts per meter, and the magnetic field is 0 0.8 Teslas, let's see here, 2 times 10 to the 5, uh, let's see, that thing, that's 2.5, isn't it? 2 divided by 0 0.8, yes, that's 2.5 times 10 to the 5th meters per second. So that would be the velocity of the particles coming out of the velocity selector. Now they enter this region here where the electric field is no longer existent, so only the magnetic field acts upon the particles, and we know that the force the centripetal force must be caused by the magnetic field. The centripetal force is mv squared over r. The force caused by the magnetic field is qvb. And from here, we should be able to figure out the radius of that. So notice that this velocity will cancel out that velocity. We put r up here, the qb down here. Flip the equation around. The, oh, yeah. No, what I want to do here, I don't want to solve for the radius. I want to solve for the mass. The mass of the particles is equal to, we already have a QB there, we put R over here, so it's Q times B times the radius of the path divided by the velocity of the particles. So now we have two radii, radius 1, radius 2, and let's say that they're equal to 3.26 and 6.52 millimeters. We know the strength of the magnetic field, we know the charge on each particle, we assume it's a single charge, and we know the velocity because we've used, we took the velocity selector and forced the velocity to be 2.5 times 10 to the fifth meters per second. So in the case of the first particle, M1, that's equal to QBR1 divided by the velocity. So 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, assuming that those are single charged particles. B is 0 0.8 teslas. The radius, convert to meters, 0 0.00326 meters. And the whole thing divided by the velocity, 2.5 times 10 to the fifth meters per second. And so that will allow us to figure out the mass of that particle coming through the velocity selector and into the mass spectrometer. So 1.6. 1.6 e to the 19 minus times 0.8 times 0 0.00326 divided by 2.5 e to the fifth equals, and look at that, we have something equal to 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms, and for those who might know a little bit about small particles, that looks like the mass of a proton. All right, now let's try M2, M2 that is equal to uh, QBR2 divided by the velocity. 
So in this case, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, that would be coulombs times 0 0.8 teslas times 0 0.00, it's double the radius, 652 meters, and the whole thing divided by the same velocity of 2.5 times 10 to the fifth meters per second. Notice that the velocity selector is not affected by the mass of the particles, only by the charge on the particles. So notice that's twice the radius, so times two, that means we get mass two equal to 3.34 uh, times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms, which is the mass of two protons, not likely to exist like that, most likely a proton and a neutron joined together or a deuteron, and so here we can see that we can differentiate between protons and deuterons coming to the mass spectrometer, hitting the target here, we can calculate the radius based upon where they hit the target, from the radius, we can calculate their individual masses, and that's how we use mass spectrometers.